This is a really amazing watch, and it's even more amazing considering the history that it's had. The fact that it was sewn into a dress uh, for four years in a prison of war camp. I think it's really surprising that it's actually survived in this state. A watch this size calls for some serious magnification. It's got some dings in the case. The mechanism is fairly gunged up, actually. It certainly needs a jolly good clean through. Whenever you get that eye out, you know I want to have a go. <laughs> <laughs> How can I have a look at what you're seeing? There you go. Thank you. Oh, wow. So can you see why it's not working? There, there is power getting through there, so I think with just a, a good overhaul, maybe some work to the escapement. So will all of that, see that this kind of dirt mark yeah. around there, that will go then, yeah? S some of it will, some not of it. all of it. OK. Well, because we want to leave some of the history. Yeah. And have a little hand in the middle? Yep, straighten these hands up, yeah. put a second's hand on. And it really gives me great satisfaction to, to actually take a clock or a watch that's important to somebody yeah. and you're keeping it alive, keeping it going for future generations. Yeah. You've got to have a passion or a love to do this type of work. It, it is absolutely a passion. You want to go the extra mile because you, you do go the extra mile. Assessment complete. Steve's made a decision. This watch is too small and too precious to work on in the repair shop barn. So he's taken it off site for specialist cleaning. I really need to um, strip it down to check and see what the problems are because th these mechanisms are so fine that, that, that any dust that's, that's falling out of um, this old thatched barn um, could affect it. It really needs to be in that, that clean environment. Steve's nearly finished putting the microscopic components of the war watch mechanism back together. I'm just putting the final, uh, more delicate parts in. Quite nervous about doing this, actually, because I find these jobs, doing such small jobs, quite difficult. I usually work on clocks, not watches, so uh, to do such an important watch um, is uh, quite pressurised. With the workings rebuilt, all that's left is to see if it ticks. I'm just going to pop a little bit of power on now and see how we get on. And hopefully, this is a sort of moment of truth. If the mechanism doesn't whir back into life, Steve will be back to square one. Ah, <sighs> that's good. Really pleased. Really, really pleased. So that's really good because actually it means that there wasn't anything drastic wrong with the watch um, and, and it was just dirt and grime that's holding it up. I'm just going to pop the hands on there. Let these hands just push on friction tight. OK, we've got a slight problem. It's, it's um, stopped. Okay. Well, that's a relief. It was just the second's hand touching the dial. Thank goodness for that. The second's hand is actually attached to a very fine part of the mechanism, and the slightest bit of friction actually will stop the watch. So it's very important that that doesn't touch the dial. So very pleased that that's all it was. With the mechanism up and running, Steve can begin to fit the delicate watch back into its casing 